Lesson 5, The Responsibility of the Spirit Between Destiny and Fate. Preface, the issue of destiny and fate has a very important link to the previous lessons of the pre-material world, all is all, and the cause of human coming to this worldly life. This link makes it very easy to be understood and comprehended. To explain more about destiny and fate, we must represent an example. So we say, suppose that there is a teacher who has many students in his class. If he looks at them before the final exam, he will surely know those who will succeed and those who will fail according to his knowledge of their states throughout the school year. His judgment is pre, pre, peremptory and can't be wrong. That is what we call destiny, which means judge on a thing as a final decision. On the other hand, that teacher can elevate the level and the degree of each successful student. He will say, for example, a student will have that degree and mention the other degrees one by one. This evaluation and certainty at the exact degree for each student is called fate. For further explanation of the meaning of fate, we represent another example. We say, if a driver looked at the depot of a gasoline if the gasoline in different cars and notice the quantity of the petroleum in each one, he would say this car can cross 20 kilometers, the other one can cross 40 kilometers, but the car which has an empty gasoline depot will not move at all. The estimation that he estimated for each car, which was done according to his knowledge of the level of the gasoline in each car's depot, this estimation is what we call fate. However, the Almighty God knows and estimates each human's rank according to his complete knowledge of their spirits and what is there inside them. This above-mentioned example shows us that God did not oblige anyone to choose to go on a straight path or another, but he, the Almighty, had undoubtedly known the states of all the creatures and estimated their ranks accordingly. Man may make a mistake in his evaluation that is because of his shortage cognition of the small details or hidden things, but the evaluation or estimation of the Almighty God is absolutely true and has no mistake because his estimation is based upon perfect and comprehensive knowledge. These above-mentioned examples are to approximate the meaning of destiny and fate to minds. When God asked the creatures in all is all world, pre-material world, saying, am I not your provider? They replied, yes. He looked at them and undoubtedly knew the goodness hidden in the spirits of those who saw the yearnings by his light and the perfection that their spirits were filled with. In addition, he undoubtedly knew what his, is hidden in the spirits of those who followed their desires and yearnings shunning him and witnessed the wickedness and diseases that had settled in their spirits. He undoubtedly knew what was in the spirits of both teams, and then he estimated the goodness that would result from those who were close to him if they came to this world, and the perfection that would appear from them. In addition, he estimated the wickedness and meanness that would result from those who are far from him when they came to this world, and the failure that would befall them. God has fated, that is to say, judged constant judgment by means of his omniscience of the two teams, as he estimated the position that each one would reach according to his deeds and to his closeness to God. <clears throat> Here and we can refute the false statements of those who tell a horrible lies, saying that God created happy and unhappy people and created people for paradise and others for hell. In fact, God did not distinguish between a creature and another, as all the creatures are his obedience, but those who listen to their creator's recommendation and looked at the yearning by his light are those who would be happy. When they came to this world, it would be a disclosure of their essence and mirror of the perfection that was absorbed and contained in their spirits. On the other hand, those who are far from their creator are those who would be unhappy. When they came to this world, their wickedness would appear to people, and they would witness against themselves by their deeds. That is the destiny and fate, and that is the justice of God to his creatures. This world is but a touchstone of spirit, so in this life the perfection of the perfect man is going to be manifested through his humane good deeds, and the far man is going to manifest his baseness and wickedness through his inhumane bad deeds. God says in the Quran, Verily, we have made that which is on earth as an adornment for it, in order that we may test them as to which of them are best in deeds. The Holy Quran, Fortress 18, al kaf the Cave, verse 7. Alif Lam Mim, do people think that they will be left alone because they say we believe and will not be tested, and we indeed tested those who are bef were before them, and Allah will <clears throat> certainly make it known those who are true, and will certainly make it known those who are liars. Holy Quran, Fortress 29, al Ankibet the Spider, verse 1 to 3. Verily, your God knows better who has gone astray from his path, and he knows better those who are guided. The Holy Quran, Fortress 68, al Kalam, the Godly Pen, verse 7. One of the features of the happy ones is that if you call them to believe in God, they will respond, but for the scoundrel and happy ones, if you remind them that they will not remember, they will not remember, and they will take the path of error right than the right path. As we clarify in this lesson of the sublime facts of the godly justice and his creation and his mercy on the humankind, so the true believers witness these facts with increase their, which increase their link with their creator and those who are unaware of them because of the veil of their yearnings. These sublime facts will be shown clearly to all the people after death. 
Therein they will acknowledge the graces and the favor of their creator upon them. They will admit his divine justice and they will praise and thank him for taking care of them. The Almighty God said, and the close of their request, close of their request will be the praises and thanks to God, the provider of all the creations. Like Quran, Fortress 10, Eunice, Jonah, verse 10. The trust bearer humankind are divided into three groups. A group who has the final certificate in the pre-material world, all is all. They are the noble prophets and envoys. A group who were not completely successful and have had a little shortage in some species of perfection. So they would achieve success in this world. The prophet says, I'm sent forth to complete the high morals of people. One, a group who failed, but if they exert more effort in this worldly life, they will succeed. The way to attain the true belief is to think about a un the universe as our master Abraham, peace be upon him, did. The prophet says, I'm sent forth as a teacher, means teaches who wants to attain the true faith. In another saying, I'm sent forth as a herald or as an infor or as informant, a herald is the one who is calling people to attain faith and an informant to those who are on the way of truth. Every human has the complete responsibility and the ultimate thinking according every Currently, every human has his own path, therefore think and search about the things which make you superior. On the other hand, those who die under the age of 16 don't have any ability in this worldly life, according to God's knowledge, to render any good deeds if they grow up, but farther more than their disobedience and regression will increase more their death and that age represents the mercy of God to them.